Just a little over 50 years ago, civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech to an assembled throng of thousands at a 1963 march in Washington. Five decades later, the city of Southfield along with the rest of the nation commemorated the landmark event. Numerous residents, business groups, and elected officials gathered on the steps of City Hall to mark the anniversary of the march in Washington, which climaxed with the ringing of Southfield's Liberty Bell. Today is all about uh, looking back and reflecting on Dr. King. Fifty years ago, today, Dr. King stood in Washington on the Mall and he gave us the iconic I Have a Dream speech. Uh, so today, uh, Bernice King, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the King Center in Atlanta, has asked uh, cities and states, countries, and the entire nation to hold Let Freedom Ring bell ringing ceremonies today to reflect upon Dr. King, where we're at, and what we still need to do. So this is Southfield's Let Freedom Ring bell ringing ceremony. We will be ringing the bell, the city bell will be brought out here, and we will ring the city bell at three o'clock along with the entire world. According to the King Center, countries, not just the United States, but countries throughout the world have signed up to participate in the ceremony. So when we heard that, uh, we were so excited and wanted Southfield to be a part of that ceremony. Well, today we're out here celebrating the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King's speech, I Have a Dream speech. Uh, he first did the speech in Detroit. Most people are not aware of that and are just becoming aware of the fact that he did that speech here. Uh, my grandfather was one of the people that Martin Luther King used to stay with when he used to journey here. He would stay with him or uh, C.L. Franklin, Reverend C.L. Franklin. And 50 years ago, I was too young to actually march with my older siblings and my father and my grandparents. Uh, however, I, did, I got in uh, the march perhaps um, halfway through. We joined the march. Uh, and I'm fortunate to be here today, uh, celebrating it again, the 15th, the 50th year. Organized locally by Southfield's MLK Task Force, the bell ringing event was part of a global mobilization to let freedom ring in celebrations all across the world to honor Dr. King and his enduring message of freedom, justice, and equality for all. The event touched attendees very deeply. Well, it's important today, particularly for our young generation, for our young people, particularly that they learn, particularly that through this dream of learning about the past, that they will be inspired to know their history. It's so much, so much that young people do not know and that can take from today, even today, that their dream is for, to get a quality education, to be uh, fruitful in what they do and to always look back, not only for African Americans, but for all people to look back to uh, the Civil Rights Movement when this nation was brought down to their knees to face what they had done in the past. Mm -hmm. When I hear those bells ring at three o'clock, that is going to be a heartfelt moment for me because all of our ancestors, whether it be black, white, all colors and all creeds, came together and united to make this a better nation. The task force has a long history in Southfield, which was the first city in the state of Michigan to hold a Dr. King Peace Walk or March. And while there has been progress made in race relations, MLK task force members still see more work to be done. His words resonate today probably more than they did then, because all the years ensuing from that day to this, we're still not where we belong. We're still not where we should be. We still have inequities in education, in jobs. He would, if he were here today, he would be screaming in anger that all of the hope of 50 years ago, and even with Obama being elected, things haven't changed that much. I still see racism, I still see anger, I still see people who don't want to go to know somebody else that doesn't look like them. 50 years ago, Dr. King, and it was interesting, he said in his speech, 1963 is not the end, it is the beginning. And that is so true because we still have so much to do. We've come a long way, but still we have to stand back. It seems like we go steps forward 
and we take double steps backwards because uh, I know that he envisioned something different when he said that, uh, you know, he wanted his children to be judged by their character. And so if we all keep that in mind, we realize that we can still make it to that goal. Because I'm a, a generation that saw what happened in the civil rights movement, saw the, saw the dogs and, and the water being uh, uh, spoon on, on kids and solve everything that was done to prevent us from voting for having the right in this so-called world, our United States where everybody is supposed to be equal. And so to see the steps that we have made and the steps that we need to, to work for, such as voter rights, such as um, giving equal opportunity to people of all nation, uh, nationalities, of people with disabilities, of uh, all the things, poverty that we see today, that those are things and those are issues that we still have to work for. So we're still not through. To learn more information about the MLK Task Force, visit MLKTaskForceMI.org.